Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of The Undeniable Show. My name is Alana Morgan and today I'm here with LMU water polo athlete and captain Tyler Harvey. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Thank you for being here. To start off, can you tell us how you got started in water polo, what that journey has been like? Yeah, exactly. So actually my father played water polo growing up his entire life, high school, and then he ended up playing at UCLA. So pretty much he kind of pushed me into water polo mm -hmm. at the age of 10. Oh, wow. And then ever since then, I kind of just fell in love with the sport. Mm -hmm. Super happy that I stuck with it and kept it going. Yeah, so water polo is a physically demanding sport. What does your training regimen look like? How do you prepare for matches and tournaments? Yeah, it, it is a definitely a very physical sport. <laughs> a lot of stuff actually happens underwater, which a lot of people don't really see. Oh, wow. Can you give us insight to that? Or? Uh, I can. It's a lot of punches, oh, wow. a lot of scratches, um, a little bit more personal stuff that I don't really want to get into, <laughs> okay. but I'm sure you can imagine it. Okay. Um, but yeah, so our training is its honestly quite a lot. We mm -hmm. train around 20 hours a week. Oh, wow. And then when we have games, we you know do film on other teams, mm -hmm. the best players, we have a scouting report, mm -hmm. what we're going to do to be successful. Mm -hmm and what, you know, we're prepared for what the other team's gonna do. And then ultimately that will help us, you know, get a better advantage mm -hmm. in, in our game, so. Thank you for that insight, because yeah. maybe some people didn't know that. Yeah. And there's stuff that goes on underwater that uh -huh. we now know. <laughs> so in your career so far at LMU, um, something important to mention is that you've been named to the Western Water Polo Association all academic team. How do you balance your academics with your sport? And what is your, schedule, plan, like how do you balance all of it together? Yeah, it is it is a lot for sure and I think it's, you know, the biggest coming in freshman year, you're not really used to, you know, being on your own. Mm -hmm. As a freshman, you're here all by yourself, no parents, no nothing to mm -hmm. kind of keep you in track. So definitely freshman year is the hardest, but the school does a really good job of, you know, offering tutors, mm -hmm. making sure you're caught up with all your classes, making sure you have that connection with your professors. So I would say it's definitely important to, you know, connect with your professors, talk with them about literally everything whether you have practice on this day you're leaving for a game mm -hmm. on the weekend or whatever and keeping that relationship and then also just spacing out and creating a schedule for yourself whether it's you know locking in all day sunday which i'm a procrastinator <laughs> um <laughs> that's me sadly leave all my work to mm -hmm. the last usually the last couple days but it like it helps because then it pushes me more to get it done. yeah exactly so <laughs> Because we have prep training all week mm -hmm. um, and the weekends, unless we have games, is wide open. So mm -hmm. I really focus on, you know, just staying caught up in all my classes, getting all the homework done on time, mm -hmm. which is super important. And then taking that Sunday to study, mm -hmm. focus, and just really lock in for school and just make sure you're on top of everything. Mm -hmm. In team sports like water polo, communication and teamwork are crucial. How do you and your teammates ensure strong cohesion when you're in the pool? Yeah. Um, one thing I would say about our team that not a lot of not a lot of other teams have is I would say we're very close and connected mm -hmm. whether that's in the pool or out of the pool we mm -hmm. hang out probably every single day mm -hmm. um, and on the weekends you know we get together and you know do poker nights or whatever mm -hmm. um, so I would say that's a definitely a big thing is outside of the pool we're all super close mm -hmm. and then that correlates into the pool you know we all have each other's back we're all best friends we're all like brothers mm -hmm. um, so you know whether you're, you're feeling a certain way and you need to speak up mm -hmm. we're all there to you know, take that in mm -hmm. and not really, um, you know, get mad or upset with them. Mm -hmm. We're just going to, you know, have their back and listen. Mm -hmm. and that's very important. And then we have a very strong communication from bottom up and the top down. Mm -hmm. So I'm a captain of the team, so I communicate very frequently with our coaches. Mm -hmm. And then they talk to me about certain things going on with the team. I'm open and honest with them on certain aspects of the team communication. Um, and then I will then take that down to you know my teammates and ultimately just get us all on the same page. Mm -hmm. And like you mentioned, you're the captain of the water polo team. What was it like taking on such a big responsibility? Yeah, it was definitely a super big um, responsibility. You know, it's me and two other guys. Mm -hmm. We split up the work between the three captains, mm -hmm. but then at the same time we're also all together. Like I would say I'm more focused on in the pool. Mm -hmm. We're kind of leading by example. Mm -hmm. Um, it's definitely a huge responsibility, you know, that you have all these younger guys looking up to you, mm -hmm. asking you questions every single day, you know, what should I be doing in this situation? Mm -hmm. If he does this, what do I need to do? And it's honestly just being very open and, you know, 
as I just said, honest with your experiences and just telling them and helping them guide you know, them to what they need to do mm -hmm. in order to add value to our team. Whether it's school stuff or water polo stuff, I'm mm -hmm. always there for them. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely a huge role and I'm always open 24 seven, but I'm definitely glad I was chosen for that. And I got all my teammates back, so. That's amazing. You seem like yeah. you love being captain and love leading your team. So last season, you played in all 26 games at LMU. Um, you ranked second on the team with 24 assists. You scored 15 goals. The list goes on. <laughs> How have you planned to continue elevating your sport for this season? So, as you mentioned, I've been more of a defender my entire life, mm -hmm. focusing on kind of finding the best player on the other team and mm -hmm. kind of matching up with them. Mm -hmm. um, so I try to look at aspects that I'm you know, good at already, mm -hmm. um, and then look at aspects that I need to work on, you know, whether that be my shooting, my fake, mm -hmm. or, you know, offensive aspects, and then I really work to put all this uh, detail and focus into practice, mm -hmm. more into those offensive, you know, type of roles or details, and then also, you know, while maintaining my defensive skills, um, it's really important to just also just focus on each aspect as a whole and mm -hmm. get better as a whole while taking focus in these little details. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So what memorable, like what's a memorable game that you've had so far, whether it's been the season for you, even though the season uh -huh. pretty much just started or just yeah. previous seasons, what game or something from the water polo team will you never forget? <sighs> That's a tough question. <laughs> there's, there's a couple of them for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stick to this season just cause mm -hmm. Why not? Mm -hmm. um, recently, this last weekend, we actually beat Long Beach, mm -hmm. which was the first time we've done that in, I think, 12, yes, 12 years. Yes, 2012 was it? Um, it was our first time beating Long Beach, which I've never done. You know, we always have really close games with them, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, we're never able to actually beat them. Mm -hmm. And this year, we took that step, and it's definitely a big thing for our team, and mm -hmm. we're building off that. Mm -hmm. going into you know the rest of our season yeah that so. was a really big win yeah. what advice would you give to younger athletes who want to pursue a career in water polo like you said you're the captain so you pretty much help inspire the younger athletes on your team now but like what advice would you give to other people who want to pursue water polo a mistake that i did um when i was you know a junior senior is i reached out to coaches very late mm -hmm. What I would say to do is definitely reach out as soon as possible. I forget what the rule is. I think you have to be a certain grade, a sophomore, or whatever the rule is. Mm -hmm. But whenever you're able to reach out, I'll reach out to as many coaches as you're able to. Mm -hmm. Continue to reach out because maybe they won't see your email mm -hmm. or you know they're getting a lot of hundreds of thousands of emails as well. Mm -hmm. Continue to reach out, build that line of communication, and then just stay focused on it. You know, Don't get down on yourself whether you, know, you don't hear back, mm -hmm or you know you get maybe denied from a opportunity just keep on building on that work on yourself work on your skills um that you need to work on and just just don't stop working at it that's mm -hmm. all i'd say like you just you can't stop mm -hmm. keep on putting that work in and it will work out for you at some point because the setback sure. lead to the victories so yeah. just keep going with exactly that. and then so if you and your water polo team right now going pro, if you guys qualify for the Olympics, everyone on your team, and you were able to, let's just say, like hypothetically pick a well-known water polo athlete to be on your team, who would be the first athlete you would choose to be on your Olympic team? That's that's a hard question. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of good Americans, mm -hmm. but I would say I'd probably go to like Filip Filipovic, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, who's out in Europe. He's a lefty and he's just like if you watch him play, he makes shots that you you couldn't even comprehend. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so definitely, he would definitely be at the top of that list for mm -hmm. sure. But there's definitely a lot of really really good waterfall players out there, mm -hmm. you know, in the U.S. and you know abroad. Mm -hmm. That's a great choice. Yeah. So what does the word undeniable mean to you when you think of that word? What does it mean to you? Undeniable. Okay, I would say undeniable means doing whatever it takes to make that next step without you know being criticized mm -hmm. obviously denied mm -hmm. doing whatever you can to get to that position or get to that spot or get to that goal whatever you want doing whatever it takes no matter what is needed mm -hmm. no matter how much extra work you need to put in mm -hmm. just doing whatever it takes to get to that spot no matter what 
Absolutely. It's always stay undeniable. Yeah, always stay undeniable. <laughs> so we're going to sure. go into some would you rather questions. Okay. Um, would you rather get paid a lot to be on a bad team or paid below average to be on an elite team? That's a tough question. Um, I feel like if I'm being paid a lot also, like I'm also getting that playing time. Mm -hmm. So it's you have to think about it like that. Obviously, I wouldn't want to be, you know, always down in games or anything like that. So maybe maybe that option just because I'm have the ability to you know play a lot more mm -hmm. and actually get that experience in playing time. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously playing on elite team, you're playing with elite talent, mm -hmm. and you know you're obviously gaining a lot of experience. But mm -hmm. I think <laughs> at the end of the day, I'd pro probably take the money. Mm -hmm. But then you could out. also become the head of that team and exactly. make it and re amazing rebuild, and rebuild it, right? the team yeah exactly. and then you have the money too that's my mindset <laughs> exactly and lastly would you rather go undefeated on the road or at home at home for sure why is that um well definitely <laughs> definitely the atmosphere i love being at home mm -hmm. i love when all the fans come out and support us mm -hmm. we definitely want a lot more fans coming out to our games mm -hmm. and then we have a lot of like I would say at home we have a lot more like big games. Mm -hmm. Like we have like Stanford that came out already. You got the crowd. I think Barcel and we posted it was packed. Oh, like, that was that was an away game. Yeah, that was that was. Away I, game. I was like, there's like three thousand people. Yeah, there was yeah. so many people yeah. at that game. So there's that. Yeah, it's hard. There's <laughs> definitely those huge away games as mm -hmm. well. But I would just you got to protect you got to protect your home. Mm -hmm. And you know losing at home is just the worst feeling ever. You know mm -hmm. you have this other team come in. Mm -hmm. And they just, you know, when they're celebrating and stuff, it's just like this is our, this is our house. We mm -hmm. don't want anyone doing that to mm -hmm. to our pool. So definitely home. Well, thank you so much, Tyler, for doing this interview with me today. Do you want to shout out your social medias? Uh, to the camera. Just can follow my Instagram, Tyler S Harvey. Um, shout out to my family, my parents. Um, thank you guys for having me. I had an amazing time. Mm -hmm. Other than that, have an amazing day. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching another episode of Undeniable with Tyler Harvey. Stay tuned for the next episode of Undeniable. We'll see you soon. And now they always say congratulations. Work so hard, forgot how to vacation.